Uh, thank you all for being here today. Um, a lot has transpired in the last few days that I'm sure you have a lot of questions about. And I'm going to immediately share my th thoughts and my feelings about uh, the situation and in a more perhaps big picture way. And then I'll open up to questions after we do that. But first of all, I'd, I'd like to just let you know that I'm humbled by this opportunity that I've been given. And uh, at the same time, I'm very confident that I can do this job for the next two weeks. And I think those two traits are really valuable. I've talked to players over the years about the value of humility and the, the also the, the cooperate with confidence. And that, that really is the power couple for me because we don't all know everything. We can't all do everything. So we have to embrace the fact that we can learn and we can keep pay attention and open our eyes. And at the same time, we are all gifted with traits that not every person has. So we, we bring a unique ability to the world. And if we can combine the humility that we possess with the confidence that we possess, we can do great things. And I, I believe that that's the case right here. I've been asked to do this job and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm humbled by the opportunity, but at the same time, I can do this. Second part of this is <clears throat> I'm, I'm very grateful for this as well. Uh, Gratitude is a powerful weapon. It's a, the root of all true joy, in my view. It's, it's when you look around you and you, you see the people that you're working with and the, the grandeur of Colorado. And the, the, I've got windows in my office now. I, before, I just looked at the walls, and now I'm in a different office. And I, I look out, and I see the mountains. And there's so much to be grateful for. And I had meaningful meetings the last two days, and I had incredible meetings with the team today. And I'm, I'm grateful for that opportunity. The opportunity was given to me by our ownership. And I would like to thank Greg Penner for the incredible opportunity and, and Carrie Penner and Mr. Rob Walton. These three people embraced me upon my arrival. Um, it's not often when a, they hire a guy mid-season or early season even, and you walk into an environment where the ownership reaches out and embraces and engages. And I found them to be incredibly brilliant people and also on a personal level, very engaging. Uh, I can assure all of you folks that are here today and all the, the fans out there that are curious about how this is all going to play out now with our new ownership, I can assure you that this is, this is an incredible group of people. And it's it's, and then they've been informed, they've uh, formed up an incredible team as well. I, I've had the opportunity to meet Condoleezza Rice a couple times during my NFL career, and uh, she's a hero for me. I've got a couple daughters, and I, I pointed to her as a, to, to inspire them of great things. And I haven't met the rest of, of the ownership group, but uh, maybe if we win a game, maybe I'll get to have that opportunity. The uh, other person that started this whole process is George Payton. I was I introduced to George Payton when he was a young scout in, in Chicago and I was a secondary coach at Notre Dame. <clears throat> we had a uh, cl an opportunity to meet at a spring clinic and and I really took to George and uh, we had a really good engagement for that particular moment in time and then we went our separate ways and here we are back together again but I've always had great respect and admiration for George. And I know what an incredible job he does. And he was the one that contacted me about coming here to assist in game management. And I said yes because of George. And so I, I thank him for this opportunity. I also want to thank Nathaniel Hackett. It's a unique position that uh, he was in. And he, I think, did something that we should all look at ourselves sometimes. and and say, you know, how can I get better? And things weren't going well in one particular area, and he sought assistance, and I respect that great, greatly, and I admire him greatly. I, he's become a friend, and, I, and I, I'm very grateful his, for his influence. <clears throat> the players, when I arrived here, I mean, they're in the middle of a season, and like, who's this guy parachuting in from here, and you know, what does he have to offer? And so many players came up to me just I think it's out of respect for the league more than anything else not really me personally they, they engaged me and asked questions and and then an offered me an opportunity to get to know them so I, I want to express my gratitude to them as well and also for the coaches that are coaching those players 
I've never seen anything like it where a guy comes in and joins the staff like that during the season and there could have been side glances and so forth, but these guys have been great and I, I really want to thank them as well. When I got here, I really didn't know what was in place for the game management apparatus, but I, I was assured by George in the process that there was elements in place that could make this work. And he was right on. Brad Miller and Mark Thews and Tony Lazaro and Scott Flaska and, and Kanal Singh and Mamet Ardan. These guys are brilliant dudes. And I would have never been able to have any success at all in game management without their assistance. I was doing a lot of things during my NFL career, but I wasn't digging as deep as these guys dig. And we did that together. And whatever you might think of the game management over these last X number of weeks, everybody can have their opinions. But those guys made this work. And I joined the team, and I became the voice of that, perhaps. But uh, it's largely due to their assistance. <clears throat> The other thing I'd like to say is I've, I've been around Colorado a little bit just as a, as a parent for hockey games and volleyball tournaments and such. And, and I've always really appreciated the vibe in Colorado. This is a really a cool place. And the people here are so engaging. You, you sit down at a restaurant and people are so naturally friendly. And I found that really attractive. And, and as a coach, I would come here and that would not be the case. That, the people are incredibly passionate about football here. They love this game like I love this game. This is in my heart. It's in my soul. And the fans here, man, they want to win. And they, I want to win. There's, there's joy in winning. <clears throat> and we all want to feel that on Sundays. We all kind of look forward to the end of the week when the football games start. And we all, at the end of Sunday's games, we all want to be the, the joyful team. And uh, so I, I appreciate that. We've had some great competitive matches against the Denver Broncos when I was an opponent, and some of them went better than others, I would say. But it was always, always great competition. And, and when we're playing here at home at Mile High, the visitors feel these people. I can assure you, I've been on the other side of it. <clears throat> the NFL is an incredible operation. There's, there's smart people that founded this league. There's incredibly smart people that have invested in this league and work in this league and from one end to the other. There's nothing like it. The parity that is in, exists in this league doesn't exist in other sports. You can't buy success here. It doesn't matter how much money you have. You, one player is not gonna make that much difference. It's the most complicated playbooks. It's the most complicated rule books. It's, it's judged by video cameras at extremely high speed, and we kill, still can't figure out what happened. And that's why all these gazillion eyeballs are glued on it every Sunday. So winning matters. It matters for these players. It matters for these coaches. It matters for all these fans that pay attention to this. And it's allowed an opportunity for all these young men, these players, to soar, to take advantage of a meritocracy that if you're really good, you can do unbelievable things in this league and for your family. And I come here from a, a source of working with players and developing players. That's been my lifeblood throughout my career, but especially in the NFL. You can imagine that's true for a special teams coach. I had worked with a guy named Clarence Brooks at the, at, at, when I was in Baltimore, and Clarence was our D-line coach and CB. It was his nickname. And uh, let me just say this, he was not a player's coach, but his players loved him to the core. And we lost Clarence in 2015 to cancer. But Clarence's mantra rings in my ears, and it's this, the NFL is now, has been forever, and always will be a player's game. My goals when I come here in this role is to help these players excel in all ways. And my, my plan for that is to give them tools to excel. This, these next two games, I want, that this, I want this team to play like I, I envision a football team playing. I want us to, to be 
offensively, defensively, and special teams the way I envision the NFL football being played. I'm going to try to do that in a very short period of time. The good news is that we're already heading that direction. This is where this club is going. So I feel that, that that's something that will happen organically. We have had to make changes. The changes in the staff that we've made have been my decisions. I know special teams. I've been coaching special teams for a long time. We weren't good enough. We were 32nd in the league in one of the metrics that I follow. And if I'm not mistaken, there's 32 teams in this league. So that, that had to change. And the only way it was going to change is for me to insert myself right in the middle of that thing. And we just did that this morning. And I, I understand that players build relationships with coaches because I have lasting, meaningful relationships with men that I've worked with over these many years. And so I respect the fact that players would have relationships with coaches that I've released. But we're, doing, we're making these changes for the good of this team so we can win two football games. And with regard to Butch, I have great respect for Butch and, and an infection. He's a good man and a, really a fine coach. I made that move because I wanted to move in a different direction with the offensive line. I want to make an impactful move in the offensive line. We need to get better there to help all aspects of it. And I made that decision. I take full responsibility for it. And I've talked to Butch, and I've talked to the players, and, I've, uh, and it's something that we're going to move forward from at this point. That's the nature of the National Football League. We're trying to win. So this week, <clears throat> we're faced with a very worthy opponent, I would say. The Kansas City Chiefs are and have been one of the best teams in the National Football League. They're coached by one of the greatest coaches in National Football League history. I have great respect for Andy Reid and, and a great deal of affection for him, too. He's a fine man. He's been so gracious with my family over the years, and he's a model for all coaches. We should, we should all aspire to be like Andy Reid. And they have an incredible assortment of star players in that team, starting with Patrick Mahomes and, and, and Kelsey and Frank Clark and all these guys, they've got, they've, it goes on and on. I could list them, and you all know them. And so who would sign up for this? You know, so you get to coach in the National Football League, huh? Okay. Here's the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> Here I am. Choose me. What questions do you have? I'm desiring that we win two football games these next two weeks. I'm desiring to have a great practice here in about an hour and a half or less. I'm desiring to have great meetings after that practice. I'm desiring to have players play the way that will excel, that will allow them to excel in their careers. I'm not looking at it like what's happening in, after the season ends. I'm not trying to build a resume. And I haven't had a resume for 15, 17 years. I haven't needed one. So I don't, I'm not trying to enhance any kind of reputation that I may or may not have. What about the Chiefs? They've beat the Broncos 14 straight times. They're coming in at probably the most challenging of times. Yeah, I, I recognize that fact, Mike. And I also think that the fans of the Denver Broncos and are recognizing that fact, too. And uh, that needs to change. It needs to change. And so how do you go about doing that? Well, you, you put together the best game plan you can. You put the best players on the field. You teach them how to play and play together. And you go about making measure of that, changing that. That's a, that's a number that I'm having a hard time grasping, real frankly, because this organization is a, is a steadfast, incredible football tradition. And it can't be that way. It just cannot be that way. So I'm setting out to try to, in one week, setting out to change the course of that. Has the season plan to play start? Russell Wilson and Randy Gregory because of injury is planned to play Randy Gregory. Pardon me? And would, you play, would you play Randy Gregory because of the injury not related to suspension? And what about Russell because the team's out of it? Was there any, would you plan to continue to play Russell? Well, with regard to, to Randy Gregory, uh, Randy, this for your all information, Randy's, um, not going to practice today. He's going to be getting treatment for an injury that he's been working on for some time. The same thing true is for uh, 
for Baron Browning, he's not going to be practicing today for a similar situation that just popped up. So those guys are not in the mix of practice today. But we're going to play every player that's available, that's healthy enough to play, and try to win a football game. With regard to Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson is our starting quarterback and will be our starting quarterback. If Russell Wilson is struggling, though, as he was against the Rams, would you hesitate to replace him to give the team a better option to win? We're going to do everything we can to put a game plan in place for Russell Wilson that he's successful. And I'm really confident in talking to our offensive coaches over the course of the last two days and going through the meetings with them and, and the walkthroughs. And I'm really confident we're going to be able to do that. Yes, sir. Sir, if someone had said to you in August, oh, you, by the way, are going to be finishing the NFL season as the head coach of the Denver Broncos, what would you have said to them? The Lord works in mysterious ways. So uh, just pay attention. You know, keep your eyes open, and there's opportunities out there. I was fine. I was doing good. But uh, here I am. I'm happy to be with you all. What, what your, coaching, you doing your coaching yes, life, sir. as it went on, what aspirations did you have to become an NFL head coach? Did that exist for you as you went down? I haven't been around too many great coaches that – didn't want to be a head coach, I would say. And, and uh, I'm no different than that. I wouldn't, I'm just not necessarily say I'm a great coach, but let me see it. Let me rephrase that. All the great coaches I've ever been around, and I've been a lot of great coaches, they either became or aspired to be head coaches. Now, there's also a lot of great coaches that never had an opportunity and, and were D line coaches like Clarence Brooks that impacted young men's lives in a very meaningful way. And that's where I was, man. I, I, have, I have guys that, that none of you have ever heard of, Anthony Levine and Edgar Jones and Albert McClellan and even some of the guys that you probably know of, all the specialists that I've worked with are more common names, but uh, guys like Zach Orr. These are guys that, I've, that have impacted me by their performance that have allowed us to have success over the years in special teams. And they, they travel with me daily. They, they call me and... Edgar Jones calls me every once in a while. The first thing he says is, you okay? And I think he's worried that I'm going to fall over at some point in time. And so th these, guys, these guys matter to me. So the, the guy, all the names that you know about, all, the, all these coaches that are, that are trying to enhance their resumes, my, give me a title and, you know, and give, let, let me call the plays. And you know, I, I can't continue in this role. I need to, be call, I need to move positions. Well, you know, the best thing to do is coach your players and then – turn the tape on, and when you watch the tape, that's your resume. How, how good are your players playing? Are they, are they playing the right way? Are they making plays? Are they productive? Are they good teammates? Are they raising other players up with them? Are they mentors to the other players? Those are the guys that I think are the best coaches, not the guys that are trying to enhance their resumes. Coach, Sir. Sir. There was some shoving on the sideline during the game. Some players were yes. upset throwing helmets. Have you addressed that? Well, I've addressed it. I've addressed it individually with each one of these men that were involved in those situations. I did it immediately, and I did it actually before any of this had transpired in some cases. Uh, so, yes, I have. And they, I think to a man they were all remorseful for what happened, which is the first step of recognition and, and showing regret and remorse. And the second step is to try to make it right. And they went to one another and did that. And and as a group, they've done that. And to your second part of your question, if I'm not mistaken, have I addressed the team? Yes, directly and forthrightly. And no, that's not happening again. You spent more than a decade in Baltimore. Obviously, had a lot of success there. Won a Super Bowl. What can you? Yeah, that was from, good. What, what can you take from that time there, and what you know about that, that organization, and apply it here to, to what needs to be done to, to get this? <clears throat> Um, yeah, that's a really good question. What can I use from there? Well, I, I think that's, that travels with me. That's that, that experience I had with John Harbaugh. Uh, John, as you probably all are aware, is a, how can I say this, a very fruitful branch of the Andy Reid vine. And John and I have been best friends for 30 years. And so we, we grew up together in this game, and we, all, we coached special teams together for many years, and we coached against each other a number of years in the NFL, and, and then we got to be with each other for, for 11, 12 years in Baltimore. So uh, much of the football that, that he has in him comes from his family and his background 
and the football that we've had since we've been together is very mutual. We are very much, um, I would say, uh, aligned in that time, and our relationship is is watertight and everlasting, I would say. So, yeah, there's going to be things that I believe in that probably you'll see from Baltimore just because that's who I am. The, the, the other part of that, I think, is that there's a certain way that football, in my view, needs to be played, and I think we, we share that feeling. And when you, oh, no, go ahead. When you talk about the, the two staff changes you made, are there other assistants that will have sort of different looking? Yes, uh, yeah, to that point. That's, I should have brought that forward. I, I believe and Mike Mallory has done an incredible job in the time I've been working with him. I mean, we were, we were grinding. It was good old-fashioned football, and as you probably all know, Mike's from good stock. I, or Mike was a, a player at Michigan when I was working the high school camp at, with Bo Schembechler back in the day, and his dad, is a, as you probably all know, is a great football coach from the Midwest. And so Mike is from good stock, and he, he took this and ran with it. And I was so impressed by how he ran the meeting this morning. I think our special teams is in good hands. Mike is going to run the special teams. And I'm, I'm going to be hip deep in that. With regard to the offensive line, I asked Ben Steele to step forward in that regard, and I've gotten to know Ben since my time here, and I, I've, I have a lot of confidence in him. He has experience, and I, I like where his mind is at with regard to the players, and, and uh, his role will expand in that area. When you're talking about the offensive line, you said you know you play a little bit. Is it, does that include guys you know moving around over the last couple weeks, or is that more of an approach to how you want them to, to play? Well, we'll let we'll let the Chiefs figure that out on Sunday. As you watched the special teams this year, <coughs> what were you thinking? What were your observations? And were you ever given a chance to offer any input into that phase? Well, when I watch special teams, obviously I'm watching it from my own lenses. I, I had a lot going on in my world here. I was, I was digging in on game management and, and trying to do math with a bunch of guys that got 1600s on their SATs. I can assure you I did not. So I had a lot going on in my life, and I was trying to, with game management, it was, I took the, the angle on that, that because there's so many offensive decisions involved in game management, and I'm familiar with the special teams. I know what to do there. I've been there. And the defense has less decision makings in game management, but just as impactful sometimes, but it doesn't happen as quickly. So I, I fully immersed myself in the offense. I really tried to learn our offense and tried to learn the vernacular of our offense and, and the, all the, there's so many more special situations on offense. So I really worked hard on that and that's where my focus was. Time for two more guys. Jerry, it was, um, it was, it came out that uh, Ezero Evero was offered the <coughs> job first. Did you talk to him about that? And yes. Then, and then you following up with taking the position. Thank you for, for asking that question. So I, I regret I didn't bring that forward. I did immediately. Uh, I've been so impressed by our defense. Our defense plays with fundamentals. They're, they're disciplined. You can see that there's a team orientation in our defense, how we fit with one another. And I've been so impressed by he and his staff and how they've operated. And so yes, I, after talking with George, I, I, I've talked to Ajero and I told him how much, how I respected his decision because of his loyalty and his relationship with Nathaniel. And my feeling is, is if, if that had happened to me with another close friend of mine in my career, I hope I would have done the same thing, but it's not an easy thing to do. And so uh, he, I think he should be recognized for the magnanimous act that he, that he did, because it's, frankly, I mean, there's a lot of people who want to be standing up here. He's highly qualified, and he deserved the opportunity to say yes. He chose to say no, and so that's why I'm standing before you. What exactly were you doing? Last long time before George called you. What was I exactly? I mean, precisely at that moment? I was, I was, yeah, well, I was, yeah, two things I was doing. One, I was retired from football, per se. I was working also, though, I, I'm involved in a healthcare venture and trying to advance hyperbaric oxygen therapy for healing. And I'm trying to bring that into the National Football League. I have some personal experiences that I don't need to go into necessarily that 
allowed me to meet Jonathan Rotella, who is the owner of Next Gen Hyperbaric Company, which is um, based on Naples, Florida. But my son's a professional athlete, but he was he was sought treatment with Jonathan's company up in uh, in Edwards, Colorado. We became friends, and and uh, I agreed to to go with Jonathan and try to bring this medicine to the National Football League because it's. It's incredible medicine, and I'm not a doctor, but I'm, I'm trying. I was at that very time, I was immersed in a in a class uh, that would allow me to learn this medicine and become a qualified technician for this medicine, so I could be not more knowledgeable in it. And so that's what I was doing. I met some incredible people that are doing really amazing work in this field right here at Swedish Hospital with their wound care and center. Um, I hope that didn't sound like an advertisement, but that's what I was doing. I was going to school. I was trying to make myself better. What I was doing specifically at that moment when George called me is I was sitting on my deck looking out at the lake with a cup of coffee in my hand and the phone rang. And so I picked it up and I said yes, much like a couple of days ago when George asked me, I said yes. So thank you for, thank you. For, about you. I don't know. Ask more questions next time, I guess. <laughs>